John Kirby has announced that during the recent uh, Russian missile attacks uh, on Ukraine, missiles of North Korean origin were also used. According to American officials, North Korea has provided the Russian Federation with both missile launchers and ballistic missiles with a range of at least 900 kilometers. Consequently, Russia can now use not only its own, but also North Korean missiles in its war against Ukraine. On one hand, this suggests a certain shortage of Russian missiles, but it also demonstrates that allies of the Russian Federation, primarily North Korea, are helping to overcome this problem. And Washington also speaks of the possibility of uh, supplying new missiles from Iran, which, uh, along with North Korea, is an important uh, arms supplier to the Russian Federation in its war against Ukraine. And if Western allies of Ukraine, they either avoid providing Ukraine with long-range weapons, or they emphasize that the missiles they provide for Ukraine's war against the Russian Federation, they cannot be directed to um, the sovereign territory of Russia and can only be used to further destroy Ukrainian territory occupied uh, by, uh, by Russians. Uh, North Korea and Iran, there are no such uh, limitations, no concerns that the missiles uh, they supply to the Russian Federation, they could end up landing and destroying part of sovereign territory of Ukraine. Moreover, that's exactly what they want, because Ukraine's defeat in its war against the Russian Federation is a defeat for the West and, uh, well, a win for Kim Jong-un and for Iranians. And the more successful the Russian Federation in, in its war against Ukraine, the more confident Kim Jong-un and the Iranian Atalas, the, the more confident they will be and the more serious their plans for confrontation with the civilized world. Kim Jong-un already talks about preparing his armed forces for a new war, and he is likely seeking the revenge for his grandfather's Kim Il-sung defeat in the Korean War in the early uh, 1950s. If Russia responds to the supplies of missiles and shells from North Korea with its own technologies, with providing North Korea with its own technologies, then Kim Jong-un could exploit this opportunity, and then we might witness a major Korean War, reminiscent of the 1950s. Because no one will stay on the sidelines of this war. Not the United States, uh, not the People's Republic of China, and uh, not the Russian Federation. Everything will repeat itself, only with an incredible uh, danger of nuclear weapons being used in this confrontation. And this time, North Korea also has uh, nuclear weapons, and uh, Kim Jong-un already warned uh, that if the enemy, he means the United States and uh, South Korea, does not cease its aggressive actions. Its army is prepared to launch nuclear missiles both towards Seoul and Washington. Today it may seem like some bluff from uh, the Pyongyang megalomaniac. If Kim Jong-un indeed received technology from Russia to enhance his nuclear arsenal, these uh, threats could become a harsh reality. As the international situation develops, it is crucial to remember that Kim Jong-un uh, faces much fewer constraints in making decisions to launch missiles at the United States than, for example, Vladimir Putin. Uh, and uh, then Iranians, they are actively destabilizing region, regions they are interested in. We all understand that uh, the attack by Hamas on Israel on October 7 was an attack by Iranian proxy forces on the Jewish state. And uh, the destruction of the Jewish state is integral to Iran's political program. And Iran is now contemplating using another proxy force, Hezbollah, in its war against Israel. Israel. They have the same goal as Kim Jong-un. They would like to assist the Russian Federation and then capitalize on the existing instability worldwide. They aim to ensure that Russia's war against Ukraine not only weakens Ukraine, which is not of particular interest to North Korea and Iran, but more critically it drains the West. Pyongyang and Tehran view Russia's war against Ukraine as an 
element of their own confrontation with the West, with the civilized world. And we must realize that North Korea, Iran, and on a more profound and serious note, even China, they all are gearing up to engage with the civilized world, but not through the language, not through threats, and not uh, through slogans, but through the missiles and uh, drones. In an era when authoritarian regimes communicated with Western countries through threats and uh, slogans, and these threat, threats and slogans were just empty bluster and could be safely ignored, that era has passed. And therefore, the defeat of the Russian Federation in the war against uh, Ukraine and the end of this uh, horrific war of attrition planned in Putin's agenda for the next few years, it is not only a question of uh, Ukraine's survival as such. It is not only a question of the survival of uh, the Ukrainian nation. It is also a question of whether we will witness a nuclear crater in the center of Washington, or whether it all remain political science fiction that you will forget and ignore shortly after watching this video. I uh, sincerely wish this to be a political fiction, and have, however, reality looks much more serious and grim than the National Security Council of the United States and other security services of uh, civilized countries might think. A big war is on the doorsteps and is already staring into the future with its empty eyes. Have a nice day. Slava Ukraine!